So I'm going to continue at this point. So now what we want to do, I want to use one of my selection tools to help me select the outer edges, the areas that have those transparent pixels. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to press Command or Control plus to zoom in. Now I'm going to hold down the space bar and click with my left mouse button to drag to the outer edges. I want to use a selection tool. Uh, couple Before we begin, I want to make sure that my layer is selected. Very important that we select the corresponding layer. And I want to use a selection tool. We have various type of ways of being able to select pixels, but I specifically want to use the uh, magic wand tool right here. Uh, w is a keyboard shortcut. You could press Shift and W until you get to the magic wand. Here is the magic wand. And the way that the magic wand works is that if you click on an area, it's going to select similar type of pixels based on the tolerance. And if I click on the sky, for example, on my image, click, notice that it selected this range of sky. If I increase or decrease the tolerance, it's either going to add more of that selection or reduce that part of the selection. Uh, with contiguous, this allows it to only select parts that it's actually connected to. I'm going to turn this off, for example. This right here is my selection, oftentimes referred to as marching ants. Right now, only this part is selected, meaning all, if I were to do a new command, only this area would be affected. Under select, I'm going to tell it to deselect. The keyboard shortcut is either command or control D. So we're deselecting that. I'm, the only thing that I changed is I turned off contiguous. When I click here, notice that it's selecting all areas of similar values throughout my image. Let me press Command or Control-0, and you can see that they have march, marching ants all over. I don't necessarily want to do that right now. Command or Control-D to deselect. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. You do have the option to sample all layers, meaning that I could select within all my different layers, but I don't want that right now. Now, anti-alias just makes my selection a little bit smoother. Now, this time, instead of selecting the sky, I'm going to click on the transparent pixels. I'm going to click right here, click. Depending on your image, it might have selected all the tr transparent pixels all around. Now. My, there's a little area that there's a gap so that they don't connect. I want to select the, another area. If I just click on it, notice that it's either selecting one or the other. But I want to add to this. There's different ways that we could add. We could use these buttons up here within the, the option bar. And these are uh, iconic representations. This is to add to a selection or to remove from a selection. Or the last one, only to keep the intersection. I want to tell it to add to selection. And if I do this, now notice how it's adding to that selection. I'm going to go back temporarily because I want to show you. I'm going to press Command D. Another way is that you could use the keyboard modifier keys. I'm going to click on one. A keyboard modifier is just like what we did earlier when we hold down, when we held down Option to create our merge layer. This time, I'm going to hold down Shift. Notice that when you hold down Shift, you get a little plus underneath your icon. I'm going to click on this area. I can let go of Shift, and that area has been added. Now, I'm going to continue to go around, look at my image. You see at the very bottom, I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to click on this area to add that to my selection. And I believe just this last corner, I'm going to hold down Shift add that to my selection. I'm going to press Command or Control-0 to zoom out. And I could see that I've selected the outer edges. Go ahead and do so if you have your image uh, similar to mine, where you want to add that area, those transparent pixels. So now that we have this area selected, we want to fill it in with what is called Content-Aware Fill. 
fill, we were filling in the area that we have selected. In this case, it's transparent pixels. But you're, we're using Photoshop's avail ability to use what's called content aware. It's going to evaluate the area around the image to try to fill it in with something that is of similar value. So to do this, we're going to go into the edit uh, menu under the file menu. And notice that there are two fills. Under fill, this is the older method. And Photoshop, uh, I believe this version, or either last version, 2019, they added this content aware fill, which is slightly different. Uh, but it's going to give us similar results. Uh, let's go ahead and use this one, because this is newer. Content aware fill. We click on this. It opens up a little window that gives us a preview. Now notice that it does take some time to generate the preview, but what it's doing, it's showing you right here on the content aware fill on the far right hand side, uh, it's showing us the areas that it is using to help fill in the image. In this image, here in the preview, I'm going to click on it. We can zoom in. We could also use the uh, command or control plus or minus to zoom in. Now this is a preview, so it might not work or be as high quality, but f so far it's good. And you can see how it's trying to figure out, this. it's giving you a preview. And this is under sampling area, it's using automatic. We could select a rectangle where we could select a, a region to for Photoshop to evaluate, or we could also use a custom area that, let's say I selected a rectangle, so it's generating the preview. So for the most part, it's going to look the same. Or we could always use a custom area where it's telling us that we need to use the brushes over here to paint over the areas that we want Photoshop to use. I'm going to tell it OK. And you can see right here in my image, I'm going to go over the sky. And Photoshop will start to, in the preview, start to fill in that area. Now notice that I will have to go over this area so that for the preview, it'll slowly start to build out the areas that it should uh, evaluate from. So this might take a little bit more work, but you might get a better uh, end result. You see, I could just continue to go around. You can see in this area where I haven't put any information. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and maybe click on this area and see how it changes it because we're look, we're getting some of the floor on the, the sky. What you're also able to do is you're also able to remove something if you don't like what it looks like. Uh, I could hold down modifier key. Uh, instead of uh, right now it's adding, you can always subtract. Or I could press Option or Alt on a PC to be able to subtract. But you can see how we could go around and we are telling Photoshop to customize how it's going to fill in these areas. Your mileage <laughs> may vary as you're working with this. But as you go around looking at the preview, it's like, you know, this is actually looks pretty decent. Uh, up here in this corner, I'm going to get some more of the sky because I don't want this up there. Now you can see over here on this area in the bottom right hand corner, uh, it needs some of this area here for it to evaluate. For some of these areas, you can see over here, uh, I might not necessarily worry about this because later on, I might just decide to crop that area off. And I'm not going to use it. But I'm actually really thinking that this custom option is giving me a better job. <laughs> it's giving me something right here that's not what I anticipate, so I'm going to add that. I'm trying not to add a portion of the person that's right here. Let me zoom in so you can see. This part, I'm probably going to decide to crop off anyways. So 
I could look at the floor. You can see on the ground right here, it is using some of the sky. So I'm going to copy this area here and see how it translates that. This other area looks really decent. I'm just going to copy just a little bit to see if it looks a little bit better. You can see down here on the far left hand corner I'm going to copy this area here. On this, further, uh, on this far edge, I'm probably going to crop off that inf information as well, so I don't necessarily need to worry about these areas. But now as I'm looking around, it did, uh, it did a really decent job of trying to get some of these areas. Right here, there is some parts that are kind of going a little bit too far, but I could always crop those areas out later on. But you can see how it did a really good job of being able to fill in those areas that were previously, there's nothing there. So more of the options before you go ahead and tell it to apply or okay. For the uh, output settings, output, we tell it to put it on the current layer, which will be this layer. But for this one, I'm going to tell it for uh, to apply this to a new layer. So these changes will be applied to their own separate layer, just so we could see what they look like. I'm going to tell it to apply and then OK. So I'm going to press Command or Control-0 to zoom out. And you can see I still have the selection. I'm going to switch to my selection tool, which is, or my move tool, which is V on my keyboard, just to give me an arrow pointer. I'm not going to click and drag. But if I click on this new merge layer copy, notice that this one only contains that information that we just filled in. I'm going to deselect those pixels now under Select, Deselect, or Command or Control D. This is the area that is has been filled, just this outer edge. These are both of those layers together. So with this tool, with this, uh, the content aware fill, we're able to fill in parts of our image that were previously not filled in. Uh, to have a little bit of fun, to extend this video just a little bit longer, uh, let's go ahead and select this layer right here, this new merge layer. I'm going to rename this one to, uh, we'll say the uh, content aware fill, I'll say corners, because we filled in the corners with this one. I'm going to go back to this new merge layer. Let's zoom in. Let's have some fun. And not that we need to do this at this point, but maybe there's something or someone you want to get rid of in this image. If you notice on my image, I have two instances of the same person walking along. Uh, I like the, the copyright here because some, there's movement. But over here, I already have two students or two people that are standing there. What if I wanted to get rid of this person? I need to select them. And I'm going to use this time the lasso tool to make a selection. With the lasso tool, I'm going to, it's, you press L to select it or just click on it. I'm going to zoom in. Using your mouse tool, I'm just going to create a selection around this person. The area that I want Photoshop to try to fill in using the content aware fill. Now, your mileage will vary. Very important, you make sure that you have the right layer selected. If I have this layer selected, technically, there's nothing there. I want to make sure that the right layer is selected. Just because we could see the layer doesn't mean that that layer is selected. In Photoshop, you really need to make sure that you have the right layer selected. So I have my new merge layer selected, and I have this portion uh, selected. Now I'm going to go to Edit, Content Aware Fill, and right now I have the custom uh, selected. Let's go to Auto and see what it wants to do. 
So auto, this is the results for auto. Look at that. This looks really good. Uh, I could go to custom, but I'm just going to do auto for right now. And I want to output this onto a new layer. I'm going to tell it OK. And you can see right here that it just made a custom fill. I'm going to press Command or Control D to deselect. And on this layer, this new merge layer, I'm going to call this one the, uh, let's see, CA for Content Aware uh, Fill Person. So when I click on this one, you can see where it was filled in. If I zoom out, Command or Control minus to zoom out, you wouldn't be able to tell from this view that someone was there. That's amazing. At this point, you do not need to do this. I wanted to share something fun using the Content Aware Fill. Uh, in next week's uh, series of videos, we're going to be going over more, to, more tools on how to do manipulations such as this. But since we're going over the Content Aware Fill, this is a fun thing that we're able to do. Now, don't go too crazy on it just yet because we, there's other things that we need to talk about before we start editing these uh, panoramas. So in the next video, we're going to go over how to straighten this image and how to crop it. I'll see you then.